Datuk Sri Ahmad Faizal diappointed as Perak Menteri Besar. No Friday prayers in Perlis today as COVID-19 concerns grow. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us and you're watching Updates at Noon. I'm Wong Kang Sin. Sultan of Perak, Sultan Nazrin Muzidin Shah, has given consent to reappointment of Datu Suri Ahmad Faizal Amuzo as the Menteri Besar. This was announced by the Comptroller of the Royal Household, Datu Pengelola Bijaya di Raja Colonel Datu Abdul Rahim Muhammad Nur, in a statement today. Datuk Sri Ahmad Faizal, who is also Chenderiang Assemblyman, managed to command the majority in the State Legislative Assembly to be appointed as the 13th Menteri Besar of Perak. State Secretary Datuk Ahmad Suhaidi Abdul Rahim, in a statement issued yesterday, said the swearing-in ceremony will be held at Istana Iskandaria, Kuala Kangsa, at 3 p.m. today. Previously, Sultan Azwin had accepted Datu Sri Ahmad Faizal Uzumu's resignation as the 12th Menteri Besar of Perak after Pakatan Harapan no longer command the majority of the State Legislative Assembly to govern the state government. This comes after Bersatu decided to leave Pakatan Harapan to join AMNO and PAS to form the Perikatan Nasional. Nine new positive cases of COVID-19 were reported yesterday, bringing the total in the country to 158. Health Director General Dato Dr. No Hisham Abdullah in a statement said six more positive cases had recovered, raising to 32 the number of patients who had been discharged from hospital. At the moment, Dato Dr. Noor Hisham said three cases are being treated in the intensive care unit and required breathing aid. However, they are reportedly in stable condition. He also confirmed that Malaysia had not detected any sporadic case of COVID-19, adding earlier reports saying case 131 was sporadic were wrong because further investigations by the ministry found that the patient was a participant of the public assembly held at Masjid Sri Petaling. The health ministry, he said, will continue to ensure that COVID-19 control and prevention measures which have been implemented will be reviewed according to the current situation in the country and be stepped up. This following an announcement by the World Health Organization, WHO, that COVID-19 had spread to 114 countries and had reached pandemic level. A participant of a religious event at a mosque in Sri Petaling tested positive for COVID-19 in Pahang. The patient is now being quarantined and treated in an isolation ward in Tengku Ampuan Aswan Hospital in Kuantan for 14 days. Pahang Health Director Datu Dr. Bahari Awang Nah said another two patients were tested negative for the virus infection in Pekan and Temelo. However, they will be quarantined for 14 days for safety purposes. The State Health Department will keep on tracing the participants of the religious event held at Masjid Jame Sri Petaling recently. So far, 50 individuals who participated in the religious event were listed as person under investigation PUI, where 49 tested negative and one tested positive for COVID-19. Now, meanwhile, Masjid Jami Sri Petaling in the capital will be temporarily closed for disinfection. Health Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Adham Baba also urged those who participated in the public rally held at the mosque on the 28th of February to immediately get tested if they begin to experience symptoms of the virus. Met at the lobby of Health Ministry Training Institute in Sungai Bulo, Datu Sri Dr. Adaham said the ministry is monitoring and tracking down the locals who attended the gathering for further action to prevent the spread of the disease. Saya merayu kepada semua yang uh, pergi ke perhimpunan tablik uh, di Masjid Sri Petaling supaya tampil eh, untuk kita membuat saringan dan kita akan uh, cuba sedaya upaya untuk uh, memberi mereka keselesaan. Sebab itu saya kata tadi dalam negara ada 57, 57 hospital yang boleh screen. Kita ada 12, 12 hospital yang ada makmal yang lengkap dan dia rawatan sekali. 
Based on preliminary information, the gathering involved 10,000 people from several countries, with Malaysian participants numbering more than 5,000. Commenting on the ministry's preparedness following the World Health Organization's announcement categorizing COVID-19 as a pandemic, he said the situation in the country is still under control. He said the ministry's level of preparedness is at its highest with Sungabulu Hospital's specialty for treating infectious disease, especially COVID-19. The Raja of Perlis, Tuan Kusai Sirajudin Putra Jamalula, has decreed that Friday prayers across the state today to be replaced by Zoho prayers at home. The Raja Muda of Perlis, Tuan Kusai Faizudin Putra Jamalula, who is also the president of the Perlis Islamic Religious and Malay Customs Council, MIPES, said the Raja of Perlis has issued a decree after obtaining the views and advice from the Ministry of Health on COVID-19, as well as religious guidance from the Perlis Fatwa Committee. In a statement issued by MIPES today, Tuanku Sai Faizuddin said this move was implemented following a string of recent developments as informed by the Health Ministry that any large-scale gathering, including religious activities, should be avoided. He also said that most management statewide should avoid conducting large-scale public gatherings at this time. He advised Muslim individuals to take precautionary measures to prevent the spread of the disease. The Education Ministry today announced the suspension of all mass events at schools nationwide. In a statement this morning, the ministry said all ministry events featuring public gatherings, such as school sports programs and co-curricular activities for March, be postponed to a time that will be specified later. It added that all ministry officials are also reminded to adhere to the Standard Operating Procedure SOP for keeping students safe from COVID-19 infection. Ministry officials and staff are also advised to delay travel plans abroad, especially to regions or cities that are experiencing a severe outbreak. The ministry also called for good personal hygiene practice at all times and advised those who have any symptom of infection to contact the nearest district health office or Centre for Preparedness and Response National Crisis CPRC. The government has imposed a total travel ban on all individuals arriving from Denmark effective tomorrow. Denmark becomes the fourth country to be added into Malaysia's travel restriction list after Italy, Iran and South Korea in the government's effort to curb the spread of the COVID-19 infections in the country. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Special Functions, Dr. Sri Mohammad Rizwan Mat Yusof, said the move is in line with Denmark's decision to go into lockdown. When met after chairing a working committee on COVID-19 meeting in Putrajaya, he said Malaysians, permanent residents and long-term pass holders returning from Denmark would be ordered to undergo a 14-day self-quarantine at their respective homes. The restriction also applies to all individuals who had been in Denmark recently. Rakyat Malaysia adalah dinasihatkan supaya menangguhkan perjalanan ke Denmark sekiranya perjalanan berkenaan tidak menesak atas faktor risiko mendapat jangkitan semasa berada di negara tersebut. The government is expected to announce several other countries to be added into the travel restriction list after a meeting with Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin today.
Dewan Rakyat Deputy Speaker Datuk Muhammad Rashid Hasnon has urged all members of parliament to focus on improving the living standard of the people rather than moving for a vote of no confidence against Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin. He said this as the appointment of the eighth Prime Minister was done in accordance with the federal constitution to stabilize the country. Ya, kalau lihat kepada kepentingan ramai, uh, oleh kerana uh, PM tersebut telah pun dipilih oleh peruntukan bukan dalam Dewan uh, uh, Rakyat tetapi peruntukan oleh Federal Constitution which is uh, 43-2 yang mana itu adalah uh, uh, yang dilantik oleh YDPA Agong. Jadi uh, pada pandangan saya, uh, banyak juga usul yang datang ni sebenarnya kami telah pertimbangkan dan banyak kami tolak. Jadi tidak ada kepentingan kerana kita nak kestabilan. He also hoped all MPs will ensure that the country remains stable in facing the COVID-19 pandemic threat. Datuk Muhammad Rashid said any motion for vote of no confidence must be discussed in advance based on the law provided. The Works Ministry is set to plan several initiatives and review previous plannings that will be brought before the Cabinet Meeting and Economic Action Council. Minister Datu Sri Fadila Yusof said this is to facilitate the Ministry's effort to help the people, especially those in the B40 and M40 groups, while at the same time improve the nation's economy. Datuk Sri Fadila also hoped that the initiatives will help spur the people's economy so that it is in tandem with the country's development. Dan insyaAllah kita akan uh, bergerak, bekerja, memberi tumpuan untuk memastikan bahawa uh, kerajaan ini adalah kerajaan yang akan memberi fokus kepada, uh, memberi kepentingan kepada negara dan memfokuskan kepada kepentingan rakyat. Meanwhile, he also said that the construction of the Pamboneo Highway will continue adding that any changes would only be made after he has received detailed briefing on the project. The 1,089-kilometer highway project was commenced in 2015. The situation in Kuala Lumpur High Court turned tense as lawyer Datu Akbardin Abdul Kadir, who represented Datin Sri Rosma Manso in her corruption case, kept on grilling the prosecution witness, Datu Sri alias Ahmad. This caused Justice Muhammad Zaini Mazlan to interject and remind the lawyer that the witness was not on trial. In his cross-examination on Datu Sri Alias, Datu Akbuddin had claimed that the witness, who was the former Education Ministry Secretary General, had an interest in the 1.25 billion ringgit solar hybrid project for 369 rural schools in Sarawak. He alleged that the witness had taken initiative to call Dr. Osman Smile, the former Secretary of Finance Ministry's Government Procurement Division, after the ministry turned down an advance payment request from the Education Ministry through a letter dated 19th of April 2017. He contended that Sri Alias had called Dr. Osman to seek approval of the 130 million payment to Jepa Holdings Sindriam Berhad, the company tasked to deliver the solar hybrid project. However, Dr. Sri Alias disagreed with the lawyer's contention. He said the payment made by Finance Ministry to Jopa Holdings in 2016 was not for the solar hybrid project, but instead it was for Genset. The hearing continues on 6th of April. That concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, Dr. Sri Ahmad Faisal reappointed as Perak Menteri Besar. Join us again at 7 p.m. for more updates on the latest happenings around the world. Thank you. I'm Wong Kang Sin. Stay tuned to TV2.